JR? Oh, hey, Tad. I can't talk right now. I'm meeting Marissa and AJ. Marissa? Yeah, we're, we're gonna go pick out a Christmas tree. <laughs> and, and, of course, uh, robots and rocket ships for AJ. And this for Marissa. She got me one like it last year. Uh, it was her way of surprising me for this uh, trip to Rio. Of course, we had to cancel. Yeah, your cancer came back, I remember. Yeah. She got me through those dark days. She definitely was the sun in my life, and I want to make sure that she knows I haven't forgotten. So you two are in a better place? We're in a great place. Instead of yelling, we're talking. We're coming up with ways to make AJ feel safe and secure. So what's up with Annie? Annie? <laughs> Annie and I work together. No, we, we don't do anything else together. Really? So you and Annie at the Yacht Club, I guess that was what? All business? You spying on me? No. As it turns out, I was there about something else. I happened to see you walk out of a hotel room. I didn't take a rocket scientist to find out that you were sharing it with somebody who matched Annie's description. You know, I'm not a little boy anymore. You don't need to be checking up on me. I'm not so sure. All right, you know what? We had a client that was coming into town from Europe. We told him we'd meet him at his hotel room. That's fine. You don't have to believe me. You know something? I remember when you were AJ's age. And your father dragged you through one dirty trick after another to keep you away from your mother. Okay, another story about... Marissa Hobby loves Club. your son. I'm not as my father. As much as Dixie loved you, stop messing with her. Messing with her? How am I messing with her? By taking my, my ex-wife and my son shopping for a Christmas tree? What am I doing wrong? Just to be sure. Annie's out of the picture. Right? Annie is out of my home. Now, if she'll be in my life later on, I don't know. But I'll tell you this right now. I will do nothing to hurt my family. Yeah, Marissa. Yeah, I'm on my way. Okay. We're gonna have a great time. If you don't believe me, you can come along. Your car, mine. <laughs> that was definitely the best New Year's party I have ever been to. Did you see the chairman of the board dancing on the bar? <laughs> there were so many photographers there, too. <laughs> That's mm. because they wanted a photograph of you. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud to have you on my arm. You're, uh... You're here, here, sit, sit down, sit down. Why? Because I want to give you a present. A present? You already gave me, like, a hundred Christmas presents. I know, I know, but I wanted to save the best for last. <sighs> look, I know it's taken a long time for us to get here. But when I look at you, I see a woman who can do anything. You can dazzle a room full of people. You raise a beautiful daughter. You can save a life. Here I am, happy, healthy, ringing another year. We're a perfect match in every way. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is... I love you. Would you do me the honor of making me the happiest man on this planet by marrying me? Yes. Yes, JR, I will marry you. Oh. <laughs> yes, JR, I'll marry you. Greenlee, sorry. Oh, I just hi, I just went by David's room and he's not there. Did something happen? Dr. Castillo took him for some tests. Okay. I don't know why I freaked out. Frankly, I don't even know why I'm here. Let's walk. May I take your arm? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you've been by to visit David pretty regularly. 
Yeah, because unfortunately I'm his next of kin. After all the horrible things he did to me, I shouldn't be anywhere near him. Why do you think you keep coming back? I guess I'm afraid of what he'll do if he wakes up. And if I'm close, I can protect anyone he goes after. Something I should have done a long time ago. Well, you've come around. You've come around. And that's what counts. Yeah, well, I'm not sure Kendall would see it that way. I'll never be able to make up for the mistakes I made with David. What's done is done. It's time we all just moved on. You don't hate him? Personal feelings aside, it's my job to make sure that David has the best possible care. And that's why I'm not shipping him off to some rehab facility. I'm keeping him here. And whatever else the man is, he's sick. He's in need of medical attention. And we'll give that to him for as long as he needs. Well, I'm done. I'm out. I filled out the papers that you sent me. I'm officially resigning as David's advocate. You can find someone else to deal with him from here on in. I can't do it anymore. All right, well, we'll let you know when we've assigned a replacement. Thank you. Greenlee, I don't want you to worry. He's in good hands. Hey. Oh, this was a mistake. You want to come in? Yeah. No, um, I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm sorry for just showing up here like hey, this. It's fine. It's fine. What? What is it? What's going on? I have a decision to make. Okay. Uh, about what? I really don't want to involve you in this. But I can't keep it from you because that would be wrong, so... Okay, just slow down. Slow down. You can tell me what's the decision and, and what does it have to do with me? Thank you so much for coming at such a short notice. My pleasure. So, I like to ask this of all of my clients. How did you find me? Uh, my mobility specialist. I mean, she recommended that I uh, find someone who helped visually impaired women prepare for having a child and setting up the nursery. Well, I'm very glad that you called. Will your husband be joining us? No, unfortunately, he's out of town for work. And I just didn't want to put this off. Are you ready to have a baby? No. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm not. I, you know, I've, I've until recently been so excited about this. I mean, just smiling, thinking about our baby and counting down the days until he or she is here. But lately, the closer I get, the more anxious I get. Can you pinpoint the fear? Yes. I'm just terribly afraid of not being able to care for my own baby. All right. Hey. <laughs> Where do you want it? <clears throat> Marissa, you choose. Well, this spot's tradition, right? Well, wait, wait a minute. Why don't we try over here this oh, year? Oh, for God's sake, somebody make the call. My <laughs> back is calling 911. Okay, all right. All right, I'll get the stand. Right. Come on in. All right. All right. All right. Oh. Enough. Yeah. Daddy, you have needles in your hair. Of course, I have needles in my hair. I just lost a prize fight to Pinezilla. <laughs> <laughs> Those needles are from a noble fur. Oh, yeah? How do you know that? They were Uncle Stewart's favorite. I think he read somewhere that they were given as a gift of gratitude and friendship. Huh. <laughs> 
What's this? A gift of gratitude and friendship. Son. Like the one I gave you last year. You gave me so much more. Excuse me. All right, who wants to decorate outside? Me! me. The first one to the front lawn gets hot chocolate and extra right. Let's go. Let's go. Touch things that don't belong to you. Here you go. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Nice tree. Thanks. Is that origami? Uh, no, these are these are notes. For Greenlee. I heard it might snow. Hey, um, why don't we sit down? You're obviously um, upset, and I'd like to help. No, I don't want you to help. What I mean is, I really don't want you to have to take this on. Okay, I, I, I just need to know what, what this is, this decision that you're talking about. Whatever it is, you can tell me. 